Welcome to 221B Baker Street by way of the South Gate Bridge. I am Sherlock Holmes, and this is my colleague, Dr. Watson. Actually, I am your host, Zachary Hare, and while she is not Watson, she is the Watson to my home, Kristen Deer. Hello. Ooh, I like that hello. <laughs> it was sexy, exotic, smoky, mysterious, <laughs> obsession by Calvin Klein. <laughs> <laughs> No, wait. Elementary by Sherlock. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, it's a fragrance. Oh, my God. I'm doing that as a comedy skit someday. It's a new fragrance. From the, or, or deduction. Yes. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Oh, my God. I have it. Wait, wait. Elementary by Sherlock Holmes. The deduction seduction. Oh, my God. <laughs> Okay, you gotta stop now. You're going too far. Oh, I went there. I, oh, the I always go now. too far. Uh, Chris, and you've been podcasting me for a while. You know the line I left so long ago. <clears throat> okay, so we're talking about the season three episode, A Stitch in Time, which I don't really know what that has to do with this episode, but okay. Yeah, it's a stitch, you know, a stitch in time, the, the box, he was going to, you know, stitch it in, <laughs> basically. You were reaching for that com- for that connection. Uh, yeah, stitching like the box. Uh, no, no, you know, uh, what, what, yeah, what's yeah, the yeah. word? The word the word he actually splice. used the uh, the actual splice. What? Well, the splice. saying is not a splice in right. time splice. saves nine. But yeah, you don't say splice in time. It's stitch in time. Okay, so I thought we start sense. right off at. <laughs> Moving on, <laughs> we start at the precinct. Well, Watson said apparently Holmes is doing some beekeeping. I'm really, I understand. I, I, how the heck do you get the bees back in? The, Who apparently knows? He's trying to prevent. He's pr- apparently he's trying to prevent colony collapse. And instead, he collapsed his own colony. <laughs> well, her. Well, you know, he collapsed her table. Well, yeah, her table. Hmm. And also we see, I see, I knew when we were introduced to Hannah Gregson, and like there, there, cause there was no mention of her being a cop beforehand when we met the wife. What? So I knew there was a reason they brought her in. Oh, you mean, uh, be, before the, the last episode we saw her. Well, yeah, but I'm saying like, um, I knew there was a reason they brought her in the first place. Cause like, oh yeah, her, apparently Gregson's daughter's a cop. Right. This this show very rarely <laughs> does something without a reason, you know. Right. So she asked for Watson's help on the case. So from there we go to the road. There's a guy driving on the road, and um, and this scene is interesting because of course he, the guy passes him and he finds him the train. Like if it hadn't been for that guy thinking being a good Samaritan, the case would never have happened. Right. And well, actually, when I my first reaction was. Oh no, not this again. This guy's gonna get himself killed, you know. But then, so it was kind of, uh, I like that it had a little twist on something you kind of see fairly often on TV. Although, really, that guy, obviously, that we find later, I believe his name was um, <clears throat> Nah Rahim, Nahim or something. Like oh, I have it right here. Nut, nut, oh, where did I put it? <laughs> Nadim. Yes, Nadim. Oh, uh, hot. Um, oh, where did I put? Oh, here. Wow, That's his real right. name I, is even harder I to took say. Took off my screen so that I look. Look at his real else. name. It's right here. Nad. Oh, okay. Nadim Al Hajj. There we go. Right. Okay. So, I mean, it's not exactly a plan, or is he? Because he's like, hey, even though I know there's someone right behind me, I'm gonna park the car with plenty of time to spare. Oh yeah. <laughs> You didn't pull that out very well. So, yeah. And I I like how the guy's like, oh, you must have a guardian angel. And they just see the guy bloody. (laughs) But how did he not see all that blood? (laughs) He's cheap. Well, if it's it's all on that side of his face and the guy was dark and the guy was like head was tilted, I can believe. Well, even so, if you see blood, you're not going to immediately think death. Yeah, but it was, I mean, he had blood on across his whole forehead, though. Even on the other side. But But anyway. Okay, so. (laughs) Yeah, so, so, so and then we go a little more. <clears throat> oh, wait, wait, wait. Is... We, we, what? Um, there was a, a spot before this. I, um, Joan regretting being Sherlock's roomie. And I loved her little, oh, well, she's her little joke. That. She joked about exterminating the bees. Oh, uh, <laughs> that, that Sherlock would be so mad if he heard that joke. 
So we're at the morgue, and Holmes is he's got with the body, and I I, I find this interesting because obviously Holmes had a great respect for this man. Yes. <clears throat> I like how he said, um, well, he, yeah, professional debunker. I like how he's like, um, oh, he said like religion, pseudoscience, ghost scientists, you know, the, the usual nonsense. Yeah, magical thought. That's my favorite one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and apparently Holmes really hates uh, Guan Kitch and Garden Gnome. Yes. <laughs> That's kind of I, how he mentions it's ironic, you know, part of kind of part of the whole yeah. magical realm. He, he would have found it ironic that he was killed by a wood nymph. Yes. And I like how he knows what it is right away. He's like, <clears throat> it's a, a, and the guy's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, how how on earth <laughs> does he know exactly that that's from the... I, no, I can I can believe that, because if I saw that up close, I bet I... Because it's, it's, it's a distinct-looking thing, and if I saw it with ceramic, I might go, and it looks like the cap of a hat. It's, it's fairly distinct, but when you see, like, how much of it and, like, how what he's holding i mean it could easily be the edge of a um of a like a bar or something like a um a side of something anyway <laughs> and, and of course he's like does he believe in crowbars Jeez. yeah <clears throat> so he's, he, they from there they, they they he his home says that the mo- well, the, he had a lot of enemies because, like, he was a debunker. Debunker will have enemies, but the most likely and violent one was a cult. And this, I like this scene. I loved it. That, it was hilarious. And then even the name. Yeah, did it, you catch the name of it? The Church of oh, it was oh, I, I, Thomasism. I did, what was it? Oh God. <laughs> I, I mean, it's oh, it's geez. almost exactly Scientology. It's just you know. Oh, I know. I love all these shows. Like, you know, one of the best examples of a church in a tv show that was so obviously scientology did you ever watch the mentalist yes do you remember oh what was it oh what was i forget it? the uh, name of it visualize yes visualize, visualize yes it was so obviously scientology because <laughs> they even had the thing where you put your hand down yeah and like they read you whatever the, my, the best part and we'll go back we'll veer back uh, <laughs> i just want to say is like the the main character lists up the thing it's like it's not connected to anything. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the best part on uh, me- the Mentalist was that it that they did that before all this um, the the new stuff came out about Scientology. The new the really? movie or documentary. Well, that was, I'm sure people around there knew knew about it even before you know. I know, but before the documentary around, came out, you know, n- now it's popular to to talk talk about it this way, did, and people know exactly. Did I what hear somewhere about. some? Some old Scientology recruitment video got leaked recently, and like I heard SNL like parodied it. Yes. <laughs> but anyways, so yeah, this I love it. It's like he's like, um, <clears throat> oh, I, I, he's like, I hated the man, but I didn't kill him. Like, and Be- I love how Bell is just having none of it. Yeah. <laughs> but oh my god, but his it, um, yeah. I it's so funny Sherlock's logic. It, it's just hilarious against the church dudes sales spiel yeah i like when he he walks over walks back and uh, he's like i forget exactly what he said but he's like yes i was talking i scanned the room i knew he was all about essentially bull and prophesizing so i talked to this girl who who i deduced had uh was here because of family reasons and like she and i convinced like and he's saying all the seven bells just like did you just deprogram her in the last five minutes and it's like i would never use such a harsh term but she's on and she's saying how she's she <clears throat> revealed to me their practices and the guy's like obviously gonna try to stop her and then holmes i, I and i love this quote like holmes says holmes, holmes, oh that's in my favorite quote transference most unpleasant yeah that's in my favorite quote that's... now I, I, this is interesting because we as we started a couple episodes ago holmes says he's not on the sides of the angels but he obviously does have a sense of right, um, right and wrong that he believes. Yeah. In. Plus, I mean, what kind of a hole prays for someone to die? <laughs> mm. Anyway. And um, and so yeah, so he and I love. Oh, and the it. fact but, that she's a level three, she's a level three conduit. <laughs> oh, yeah. And yet he deprogrammed her in three minutes. I guess it's mm. it takes a minute for each level. <laughs> uh, I wonder if that was on purpose, you know, the minute going with the three. I could, I wouldn't put past the writers. Now, 
at, we're back at the, now I found this interesting. We're back at the precinct that their illegal surveillance. Well, I don't know if it's I don't know if I don't know the oh, legality, but anyways, little, their little surveillance. Tiny thing. I love that smirk oh, yeah. he gave when he said, you know, and it, energy transference most unpleasant. Oh, that yeah. little smirk that was great. That that was I'm gonna kick your butt. Yeah, it was an it, it was like an evil smirk. I loved it. That was a bring it on smirk. So there, I mean, it's interesting here because the surveillance of the cult leads to the next clue. Yes, this is where we it's actually helpful. <laughs> Even though they're stalking and that, harassing people, it's helpful in this. Right, and it leads them to um, um the um the uh, Colin. I, I don't have his yes, but I don't have the the victim's name written. Oh, down. Garrison Boyd. Yeah. Okay. He believed that the Isley was using like the woman's superstitions to drive her out of her house. Yes. And the wife thinks it's a ghost. And oh, I love this little thing about an open marriage. Sometimes we had an open marriage, but sometimes we didn't. But I still slept around. I'm like, then it wasn't really an open marriage. <laughs> you were just I know. cheating. And it was. Um... I know people who. <clears throat> Sorry. Oh no, I was gonna say I know people who actually do make that work, which is interesting. Yes, that was it. That's it. <laughs> Let's not get into the, our uh, opinions on that right now. <laughs> now, when I heard, did did you think it was anything but Arabic when you heard the voice? Because I immediately said, oh, that's Arabic. Yeah, I, it was obviously. But also, wait, go, going back, why the hell did he tell them about the this woman? Isn't that how Boyd died? Is because he he thought that he was tricking her with with these noises why would they oh, yeah. why would he point them in point investigators in the right direction well i'm sure they would have found it, uh, it out eventually on their own but you're right i didn't think of that he's the one who sends them to her yeah <laughs> well because he's it's his hubris Ugh. i have it i have it in my notes every visit he's like daring them yeah i mean he's an idiot <laughs> So they go over to the neighbor. She's like, oh, she's like, I hear this and that. And Holmes puts it all together and says, I don't believe you are having delusions. But I, and he's like, can, I, can we go into your neighbor's house? It's, it's funny how she house. plays that. And and he's I mean, the voice is obviously saying something in Arabic. And she's like, no, no, it's Jim Harmon, which sounds nothing like it. I know. I immediately says, "Oh, he's saying like I, I, or whatever." And he he deduces it's a it's a, like an Arabic. It's like saying "damn," like oh, like yeah. stubbing your toe or something, like like how we would say "mother." Yeah, that's probably <laughs> it's along those lines. So he finds the tunnel, and I love how hey, look, a random tunnel. I'm just gonna go in. Yeah. Let me tell you something. No. <laughs> yeah. Just. No. I would not go into a a tunnel. I I would like wait for backup. I'd call people. Have them come, and they can go in the tunnel. Then, People with guns. This is where we find, this is where we find Ruby, and I got. I mean, I had no. I know. I know. Obviously, there's stuff under the ground, but I never know. Like that, if I really wanted to, I could dig in around, under my house and find something that would just screw up everything. Yeah, and Ruby is a a character in this episode, basically, and it's Ruby mm. on rail. No, it's not Ruby on rail. Sorry, that's a link. So, so mm-hmm. um, he he calls the. He calls the the cops in, and I love how because again, this I've, I've said this many times. My favorite parts show that Bell is just as smart as anyone. That like Bell does a great deduction of the scene. Yeah, he does a great summary, and I like that a lot. And so they go, so they go, go through the crew. They deduce because there's a man in the because of the toilet seat and all that stuff. And I, I'm I gotta admit, I am genuinely curious to what that milk tastes like. I that am yogurt too. Drink, a carbon. I mean, I, I love I mean, trying lots of different things and. I mean, I mean, what, one of my favorite things of all time is um, this Thai coconut ice cream with corn and these like chewy corn? green things and like these little coconut flavored like chew- other That's chewy things. Disgusting! <laughs> it's awesome. But the but carbonated milk or really, it's like a carbonated smoothie. <clears throat> what would that even? Well, I said it's like like bu- bubbling yogurt. So. I mean, it sounds interesting. I, I, I mean, seltzer and milk, would that even... Well, there's cream soda. Maybe it's... Oh, what's it? It's probably... Uh, yeah, well, well, whatever. We're, we're spending too much time on It could be similar to that. <laughs> I know. So, they, they do say, obviously, that that can't be easy to find. So from But from there, we go to the brownstone, and Hannah's talking to Watson about the case, 
and um, Watson saying this must lead to something like that, that, that there's people snocking off pharmacies, but that probably leads to something bigger. So we, we should pass this up the true chain. So that ends. And Holmes makes an interesting point that she shouldn't help her because uh, Hannah is a good cop, but a bad detective. Yeah. And he says it's a, like, she's like, you help me. And um, she's he's like, yes, because I saw something new. And she's like, what if I see something in Hannah? He's like, well, you're wrong. And I thought it was no, funny how the... she she's like a little kid here watching. Yeah, she's like, well, now we get well, forget you, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and now we, we instead of a rude awakening, we get a we get the post its. You know, oh, play, yes, it, it made me think of it made me think of um Alice in Wonderland. Oh yeah, it, that that's a good that's a good one. Yeah. So Holmes is telling that they've that of course they couldn't trace him, but they were able to get his picture and. They did. Do, they saw him talking to someone who obviously knew him, which they saw. Is, they found her address. I love this scene. And what does he say? I find. I find icono, iconography. Iconography. Icon, I'm, I'm making up a word. Yeah, a sick like thing that. or something like that. And it's like, but I'm, I thought he would at least have the badge that says NYPD consultant, because I know Watson has it. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I love how she's like, "Do you know this man?" She's like, "You're kidding, right?" Why? He's over there. He's like, "Uh oh." Well, I, I kind of like the pace of all this whole section yes, here. It was, a, it was very interestingly paced because he tells her you must get out because he just set a fire. Yes. And then Holmes bursts in and the guy he's the guy's getting ready to set the place <clears throat> on fire. But Holmes has a quick scan of what he's doing. And Holmes realizes the man's not a terrorist. Tries to convince him not to set the fire, which he does. And, um, and that memory would be so awesome to have. I would love to be able to do that. Capture, capture data to- before it's destroyed. Indeed. So from there, we're back at the precinct, and they have the device, and they're going to examine it. Now, there's, I think there's, a, we have another. Hannah, we Watson finds out that Hannah um, uh, busted the the low the low level thugs. Now, I think we could a comparison could be made here that Hannah is like Lestrade. <clears throat> yeah, actually, a lot of people are mentioning that. <laughs> Oh, so I, I was I, I didn't hear I didn't know if I was but because if you because remember Lestrade Holmes said had a had a lot of potential as a detective, but because of Holmes he flew too high too fast and he stopped building his skills right and just let the fame do the work for him. Although I I'm not and I I, I was thinking about that too, but then I don't know that she uh, even has. If she, if Hannah could even reach that, point. I don't think she even wants to at, at all. You know, I don't, I don't think. No, she does because she, we know she wants to be captain someday, like her father. Right, but I, I don't think that, um, you know, she, she would have any, have that potential, even if, um, even without Watson helping her. I mean, well, we don't. I don't know. think she could ever. She just couldn't do it. <laughs> hmm. And that's – well, she's got a, t- a big shadow looming over because her father's such a good cop. Yeah, I think that's the the problem. <laughs> she's just not yeah. – as she she's not a detective at all like like he is. And we see, we see here we, – we, the, we go – they go back – they find out that um, the man – that the building actually belonged to Isley <clears throat> or, or something like that. And you no know, – I actually I feel a little, a little proud of myself because I noticed that there was a different painting in this scene. A different what? D- remember the clue later painting in Isley's apartment? Oh yeah, the painting. Okay. <laughs> I noticed that it was different before they mentioned it in that scene. You know what? I wasn't even looking at it. <laughs> no, I didn't notice it. I did, uh, and I feel special. <laughs> you are special. But okay, thank you. This is a very tender moment in the Becky Street podcast. <laughs> So he tells him it's like it, there's no way he could have done it because his because of he's essentially Gordon Gecko and so he can't touch any of his money he can't even look at the market or he'll, so there's no way he could have done it and he's trying to downplay his connection to the uh, he so that they all know what, so they go back to the precinct and we have a scene with Watson and Hannah and again I think this is where her ambition can be compared to Lestrade I, I'm not sure if they're gonna I think they're going somewhere with this but we'll see what in, in some because, ways it I is think, similar to Lestrade but I don't think she's even uh, like ha, you know has e- like even any potential <laughs> I don't know at well, least you know. in that direction and um 
Yeah, so that was a short scene. But I think she, I think Hannah might feel a little guilt. Well, we'll see. I, I, I think they're gonna go somewhere with this, but we'll see. It didn't. It so, didn't seem like, like they were Stan... showing that. I don't know. She seemed kind of two dimensional to me, and the fact that her father knows that she, you know this is just the way she is, the fact that he knows that just makes her even more two dimensional. I don't know. Yeah. So um, they check the device, and it does nothing. Which confounds. That means someone was going through all that trouble to put to splice in a device that does nothing. Now I love this because, like, and Holmes will not accept this because obviously gold it must do something. Yes, and the, the look so on his face angry. of frustration, perfect. And we get um, the return <clears throat> of Mason. I love that he's such a little smart ass. Well, it's like I thought you were grounded from the internet. He's like, does this look <laughs> like the internet? <laughs> he's just such a little jerk. He's a little essay, you have- know, s word. They should have him um, join everyone just for that. Yeah. But, and, okay, and this is where it gets – because Holmes is like – Mason says it, this thing uh, – again, it does nothing. But but then Holmes realizes it does nothing for a specific amount of time. Yes. So that – And I, I like how – I love the moment of um, – the, the, um, the moment of the uh, – oh, what's the word? You know, the moment he realizes it. Eureka moment. Yes, that eureka moment. As he's, t- as he's speaking to Joan and stops mid-sentence and that look oh, on he, his I face. I love when he does that. Yes, and so they're back at Isley's. And again, he's like <clears throat> daring the police. but And they're like saying, You're, it's an interesting thing. Because it does no, it, nothing for that amount of time, it lets his – the people who handle his money, who apparently, like Holmes said, aren't that good at investments – it, get, it let, they'll have first hand and, and better and they'll make better trades. It's actually quite brilliant. Yes, I actually i I've heard um I've watched specials on this and and I've read about it several times and I didn't even I didn't even pick up on it about the whole trading oh, sure. how the trading goes fast you know along these transatlantic oh, oh, lines yeah. and then. And they're only like a couple of milliseconds difference. But I find it interesting. Yeah, and then he's like, again, he's like daring the police. But then again, Holmes notices the paying is different. That he must have paid him off with that. But the, Holmes says that we might be able to track him down. Although I, I, I'm surprised, even with the evidence, I'm surprised the guys gave the guy gave in because they didn't have him. Did, they said they hadn't caught him yet, right? Right. I would have, I'd be like, oh, well, you didn't catch him yet. So, yeah, they, they still didn't have proof. But also, but, but, I yeah. I don't, I mean, I, I, li- I like the, the whole idea. It's interesting and, and all that. It's a good mystery. But in, in reality, he would never have been able to pull this off because everyone, everyone in trading would notice this right away. They would know something was up. They would know that. Well, would would they, or would they just notice <laughs> that the if it's, oh, it's a they, tough they area, would get, like, I th- again, I'm pretty sh- sure they would notice something was up right away, and they would probably, they probably have ways to um, kind of detect problems in the line. They would probably figure it out very quickly. But would because it, it's really just a delay in the infra- and, and like he said. It's a very short delay. It's it's like what millis? It was like four point one milliseconds yes, but or something. Right, right when the uh, the investments start, uh, you know the right when everything swi- uh, sit, um, switches, you know all the all the um, big companies and the smaller companies start switching places in in being you know in making these investments properly. You know, they, somebody yeah. they would know something was up. You know, it's well, really know. but again, I, I think I think he gave him. But so he again he makes the deal, and they were back at the precinct, and we have this very interesting <clears throat> moment between. And I find it weird that they ended the episode on this note. They have Gregson and Watson, and like you said, he's like, I know how my daughter is, and I I really think they might be going somewhere with this. I don't know if it's with Hannah or with Watson, but I think they're going somewhere. Well, I also, I like how Gregson knows that his daughter did something wrong just because Watson was acting a little off. You know, he yes, yes. he knew what was going on because of, because he, he could see it in what, in the way Watson was acting. 
Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, so before, before we get into um, summary, let's do. I'll do my two favorite lines. Bell. So you prayed for the guy to die after the guy gives him the whole spiel. I changed my metaphysical energy into his metaphysical energy and put it back to him. And Bell just goes, "So you prayed for the guy to die." My second favorite line again. We already mentioned met with. Uh, an energy transference most unpleasant. Yes. That's my favorite line, too. <laughs> so before we get in the final thoughts, let's have everyone's favorite part of the show where I don't talk for at least a few minutes. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for Kristen's Clue Cap. <sighs> so the crime this week was the murder of Garrison Boyd. And the first clue is that he has the tip of a garden gnome hat stuck in his eye. And he's a professional debunker with with enemies, and this leads to a cult that stalks their members. And from this, they get the photos of him arguing with Colin Isley, whom he had accused of trying to scare an old lady out of her home with fake ghosts. And so the the next clue is an audio clip of the quote-unquote ghosts, which reveals a man yelling an Arab obscenity. And the description of uh, ghost activity and the glasses breaking, um, that point pointed to a powerful uh, to powerful equipment being used to dig a tunnel. And Sherlock finds that tunnel. And um, so then the, the next clue is the garden gnome with a chipped hat near the tunnel, indicating that Boyd had discovered the tunnel while in search of the fake ghosts and was killed for it. And the tunnel was in a house where the o- owners were on vacation, and the killer, uh, Nadim, Um, dug through to Ruby, which is the fastest transatlantic data cable. Okay, and in addition, the killer had left some bubbling yogurt in the fridge, which is sold by at only a few establishments. So they're able to obtain security for footage um, of him paying, but he's paying with cash, but he seems to know someone who pays with a credit card. And from this, um, they find the, uh, the killer, Nadim, who uh, gets away, but he has a, a box um, which he was going to splice into the data cable. Okay, and so, uh, but the box appears to do nothing except delay the data by four milliseconds, which is enough to make it slower than the data cable used by Colin Isley. So this is what brings them back to Colin Isley. And also, when they go back to Colin Isley, he has new art on the wall. And because his financials are being watched so carefully because he's had trouble in the past, he, the only way he can pay is with art. And so he and Sherlock had seen Nadim leaving with a tube when, when, he, when he fled. And so... Then from that, they know that he paid, uh, Colin paid Nadim with art. Okay, and so this is how they figure out that, you know, he did it and they can somewhat prove it, at least so far. Okay, so that's it for the clue cap. All right, that was lovely. And now for our final conclusions. Kristen, what did you think about this episode? <laughs> Nice accent. <laughs> um, I was trying to sound like those vapid. We are here in the lavish home oh, I see of the now. richest oil barons in the world. Hey, okay, I see now. Um, so you sound like a valley girl. <laughs> oh my god, this is like no, no, like this, early no elementary, this my is dear valley Watson. girl. Oh my god. Okay, so um. <laughs> so I, I love... <laughs> you, almost, you almost got trapped in the voice. <laughs> this was more um, focused more on the mystery, not much um, character development. Although there was there was a little with the whole Hannah thing. Um, 
and I, I, you know, I kind of like the, the, you know, the Hannah storyline, but it's usually the character development parts are really rewatchable. This one w wasn't really. And, um, since it was more about the mystery, it was really, the mystery was really good. I really liked all of that, mm -hmm. but it, it's not, it doesn't really have a high rewatch value. Um, eh, not really. although there, there were a couple of just really funny moments and, and maybe mm -hmm. there's maybe like five minutes worth of <laughs> rewatch value, <laughs> but I, overall yeah, I, I like, I, I liked it. I liked yes, it. I, I thought it was a good, I thought it was a good episode. I mean, I'm, they, they, there was a little, little thing, so I'm just curious if they'll, they're going anywhere, but I like the case. <laughs> like my favorite, I love the idea that the biggest clue is that the, the the device does nothing, so if you think, oh, it must do, but it does nothing for a specific amount of time. Yes. That I find that's I think really co a cool idea for a mystery. It's one. Of, it's actually a good my uh, one of those puzzles. Like it's one of those good uh, mind bender puzzles. Indeed, indeed. So I uh, definitely good good episode for my opinion, and it's we've got a few episodes left of the season, so I can't. I mean, I'm really curious where they're gonna go with this. So I'm, ooh, we'll see. So I, so I like to remind everyone if you want to get, oh wait, ah, someone did get in touch with Kristen. We had a post on our Facebook page, and you were so happy about. It. Please read for us. <laughs> yes, I was happy about it because, and and it's from uh, Brenda Tackett, and she said Kristen was correct. And this is about our uh, last week's podcast. She said, Joan lives in the brownstone and has her office downstairs, keeping business and private life separate. So that is was from Brenda Tackett. All right. Yay. You confirmed Ooh. I was correct, and you were wrong. <laughs> Wait, what did I say? You had said that she lived in her office. She lived in the office. Yeah, that not but wait a minute, that's what you just said she just said. No, she said Joan lives in the brownstone and has her office downstairs. She said Kristen is correct, that she lives oh. upstairs and has the office downstairs. You said oh, she okay. lives in her office. Oh, well, there you go. So, <laughs> well, nice to know that we're all not just, we're, it's not just me and Chris talking to each other alone. So, th thank you for posting. And, and everyone, please, if you post on the Facebook. We would love to get into a I remember in the beginning I used to probably, people used to post and we had discussions it was awesome. I really would love to get that going someday. Again. Even, especially with the season coming to the close it would be a great thing to be able to discuss. So, uh, remember, if you want to get in touch with us, it's um, Baker Street Podcast on Facebook, Baker Street Pod on Twitter, and of course Baker Street Podcast at gmail.com So, is there anything else you would like to touch upon? Hey. Nope. That's it. Oh, me either. We're going to next week's episode. Can you see it? Can you see it? So it's time for us to part because the gate is afoot. <laughs>